evaluation of pelvic pain and the screening for the ovarian cancers. IUCD in implantation location, evaluation of the primary amenorrhea, saline sonar hysterography for delineation of the uterine cavity, tubal potency studies in infertility and aspiration of the ovarian cyst and other adnexal masses. It can also be used for the adnexal masses of, uh, for guided biopsy. Um, on your screen, you can see an image of an ultrasound. This is a normal pelvic ultrasound. Here you can see a normal uterus. On ultrasound, you can only see these uh, different shades of gray. You just have to evaluate. If you have exam, you can identify the location of your exact organ. You need to know what actually the organ is. You have to look at the shape. The shape seen on the ultrasound is exactly the same you see in your books. This is a uterus. This is myometrium. This black area. And in the center, this white line is the endometrium. Here you can see clearly the endometrium, the white pin, and the surrounding area is the myometrium. This is an MRI image. Here you can see the gross picture of the pelvis. This is the uterus with the myometrium and the endometrium. This is the urinary bladder here with the fluid in it. Posteriorly, you can see the sacral, sacral spine. These are all normal images. This is a normal ovary, this gray area, an oval shaped ovary with two normal looking follicles in it. These black areas are the follicles. On ultrasound, fluid always looks black. Hamisha will jet black with a clear fluid over whether it's bladder, urinary bladder, gall bladder, any kind of this, SIT, all the fluid is black on ultrasound. So these two black circles are actually the normal looking follicles in the ovary. Here you can see this is an ultrasound image of a uterus. I don't know why it's blurred. This black area is an in, in intramural fibroid in the region of fundus. I'll show you another image. This is another image of the uterus. This is the endometrium, the white line, and this black area, the round black area, is an intramural fibroid within the myometrium. These are the other images showing a large fibroid. You can clearly see these fibroids on MRI. This is an MRI image. Here you can see the gross pictures with multiple intramural fibroids within the myometrium, and the endometrium is completely normal in this case. This is just for the comparison. This is a normal uterus with the myometrium and endometrium, and this is uterus with thin endometrium and the surrounding intramural fibroid, which is abutting the endometrium. This is an image of a sonoterogram. Here you can see this image map. They can the endometrium is a solid looking white thing. As I told you before. As I told you before, uh, the uh, fluid looks black on ultrasound. Here you can see in this image, this is an endometrium with the fluid in it. Because in sonia stereography, we instill fluid within the endometrium to see any endometrial pathology. So this is the fluid inside the endometrium. This is the case of a sonia stereogram with the fluid within the endometrium and, and, and a submucosal fibroid, which is projecting into the endometrium. These are other images of sonar hysterogram. Uh, these are showing a fluid, the uh, submucosal fibroid projecting into the endometrial canal. This is another image. And here you can see the vascularity. Sorry. These are the other images showing endometrial polyps within the endometrium. Here you can see multiple polyps projecting into the endometrial canal with the fluid in the canal. This is an image of a sonar stereogram. And this is an image of a normal ultrasound showing an endometrial polyp. It is very difficult to differentiate on a simple, sim simple ultrasound whether it's a polyp or a submucosal fibroid. When we instill fluid in the endometrial cavity, we can clearly see polyps projecting into the endometrial canal. This is, a, this is how it helps in the diagnosis. This is a case of an adenomyosis. You can see a bulky posterior wall of the uterus with multiple cystic spaces within it. 
fibroid is also noted in the interior wall in this case. This is an image of an ultrasound showing adenomyosis with multiple cystic areas in the posterior myometrium. This is the endometrium. This is a case showing endometrial carcinoma. Here you can see a large mass, irregular margins within the endometrial canal, which is infiltrating into the surrounding myometrium. This is the endometrial carcinoma. Here you can see this is the normal endometrium. This is the normal endometrium. And in case of endometrial carcinoma, you can see this large bulky mass, which is projecting into the myometrium. This is another other image of from a large bulky mass which is infiltrating into the surrounding myometrium as well as into the cervix. This is the region of the cervix. It's going down and infiltrating into the cervix. Now, um, I'm going to tell you about the basic ultrasound features of an ovarian torsion. Uh, because what you need to know are the actually basic things. You don't need to diagnose adenomyosis on ultrasound or any complicated thing. But you need, to, but you, you 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 can see clearly the polycystic ovaries, ovarian torsions, fibroid. These are the basic things which you need to like understand or need to evaluate on the ultrasound images because these ca images can be shown you in exams as well. Ultrasound features of ovarian torsion are the unilateral enlarged ovary. How you can know this? Compare both them, both ovaries. There is a uh, there is a marked discrepancy in the size of the ovaries. The unilateral and large ovary, which is more than four centimeters, the most constant finding in the ovarian torsion. The volume of the cystic ovary averages twenty eight times the normal size. The ovarian stroma may be heterogeneous. String of pearl sign that is peripherally arranged follicles within an enlarged ovary. Coexistent mass within the twisted ovary. Free pelvic fluid is another sign which can be a reactive fluid. Then the twisted vascular particle. This is how this is an enlarged. You can see this is a normal ovary with a normal vascularity within it. These dots are the vessels, normal vessels. This is a torsed ovary. This is enlarged ovary. The follicles in the periphery, central solid is stroma, and no vascularity inside the ovary. This is a vessel which is out, which is going from outside of the ovary at the periphery, but there are no vessels inside the ovary. This is an avascular enlarged ovary with a peripherally arranged follicles, suggestive of an ovarian torsion. This is another image showing an ovarian torsion. This is an image showing polycystic ovary. Neck of we can call it necklace of pearl pattern in the ovary. Multiple circles of equal sizes arranged at the periphery of the ovary with a central solid stroma. Here you can see this is normal ovary with a different sizes follicles. Some are small, some are of medium size, some are large. This is an ovary with all equal sizes follicles arranged at the periphery. This is an image showing an ovarian mass, a mixed density mass with the solid as well as the cystic component. I told you before as well, any fluid which is seen on ultrasound is black. So this is a cystic component of the mass, this is a component of the mass. This is a complex solid from cystic mass. This is another image of a mass solid from cystic. This is a dermoid because we can see a fat density in the fat signal intensity that is white. Black area is the fluid, and this white area is a fat. Here are some images for the revision. This is a uterus. Here you can see a small intermediate fibroid in the interior wall and a large mass within the endometrium infiltrating into the myometrium. So, this is a case of intra, uh, sorry, endometrial carcinoma with a small intermediate fibroid. This is another case, an ultrasound showing an endometrium, myometrium, and a small black area in the posterior wall. There's an intramural fibroid, which is indenting the endometrium. This is another case showing, this is a calcified fibroid in the interior wall, and here you can see the endometrium is markedly thickened and shows a fibroid within the endometrial canal. So this is a submucosal fibroid. Now we move on to obstetrical ultrasounds. 
in obstetrical ultrasounds, uh, the first trimester indications for the first trimester pregnancy are the presence of the intrauterine pregnancy, suspected ectopic pregnancy, or the hydrated tip of mole, the cause of the vaginal bleeding in the first trimester, pelvic pain during pregnancy, estimation of the gestational age and the cardiac activity, evaluate multiple gestations, and any concurrent, uh, concurrent pelvic maps. Now, in case of the first trimester pregnancy, first we confirm the viable pregnancy because it is very important. Gestational sac is visible at six weeks of the gestational amenorrhea with transabdominal ultrasound. Echogenic, this here you can see a small gestational. This is an echogenic means a white ring with anechoic center means a black center. This is a white ring with a black center. These are the ultrasound terminologies. Echogenic means a white and anechoic means a black. It's a white ring with a black center. This is a gestational sac within the endometrium. This is the endometrium. We have to measure the mean sac diameter because sacs are usually not very circumscribed on all the images. They are Sometimes they are ovoid, sometimes they have different shape. So we need to take the diameter in three dimensions, AP, TS, and LS. And then we uh, take out the mean of that, those diameters. That is called the mean sac diameter. The gestational sac size increases by about one millimeters per day in the early pregnancy. Okay, for the confirmation of the viable pregnancy, we need to see a yolk sac that is a bright ring. Here you can see the bright ring inside the gestational sac at six weeks of gestational amenorrhea. We have to see the fetal pole, which represents the fetal development. Here you can see this white area and the fetal heartbeat which is usually seen around the um, time where it's like a flicker, move like a flicker. This is an, um, uh, so what measurements you need to take are, uh, other than the mean side diameter. It's the crown drum length. This is the crown drum length from the head to the buttock area of the fetus. It approximately estimates the gestational edge from the seven to 12 weeks of the gestation. It measures the length of the embryo, excluding limbs or the yolk sac. And a rule of thumb for the estimation of gestational amenorrhea is six weeks plus CRL is six weeks plus six weeks. If it corresponds to the six weeks, we need to give plus minus two days along with it. Here you can see this is a large gestational sac, but there is no fetal pole, there is no yolk sac inside this sac. So this is a case of a blighted ovum. This is a blighted ovum. This is another case which is showing an ectopic pregnancy. This is the uterus. This is a ring-shaped structure with a small yolk sac and a fetal pole in it. It is outside the uterus. So this is ectopic pregnancy. There are various types of ectopic pregnancy. It can be a tubal, it can be ovarian, it can be within the broad ligament. But the um, but in cases where you can see a thick ring around this uh, fetal, sorry, around the gestational sac, these pregnancies are usually tubal. This is as actually the edematous tube walls around the gestational sac. This is another case of the ectopic pregnancy. As you can see, the uterus, this is the left ovary, and in between the uterus and the left ovary, this thick tubal ring shaped structure with a fetal pole in it is a total pregnancy and likely tubal ectopic. This is a typical sign we see in the pregnancy. This is called the ring of fire appearance. When we put a Doppler to see the vascularity, we see an extensive amount of vascularity all around this tubular structure. This is called the ring of fire appearance in the cases of the ectopic pregnancy. This is another hallmark to diagnose the ectopic pregnancy when there is no fetal pole inside it. Now the second trimester sonography indications are the estimation of the gestational age, evaluation of the fetal growth, vaginal bleeding, incompetent cervix, abdominal and the pelvic pain, and fetal presentation. In second and third trimester, the measurements we have, we have usually taken are the biparietal diameter. That is the diameter between the two parietal bones of the fetus. Other thing is the femur length. That is the entire length of the femur from the greater trochanter to the down to the knee, as well as the abdominal circumference, and the whole circumference of the fetus abdomen. The various parameters can be used in a specific equation providing estimated 
feasible way. The estimated feasible way we don't actually calculate. The machine calculates this for us by uh, calculating all these uh, three measurements. This is how the BPD is measured. This is the head of fetal head. You can see the entire cranium. This is the frontal bone. These two are the parietal bones and posteriorly there is occipital bone. Take diameter between the two parietal bones. This is called biparietal diameter. This is the femur of the fetus. The hair, how you can, this is how you can take the femur length from end to end. This is the abdomen. This is the entire abdominal circumference. Here you can see the stomach. This is the spine. This is the liver. The, the abdominal circumference is taken all around the circumference of the abdomen. The second trimester scan, the most important scan, the second trimester are for the fetal anomalies in which we evaluate if there is any uh, anomaly within the fetus or the fetus is normal. The structures we need to see in the anomaly scan in the systematic manner are the head and the brain. We go from top to down. The head and brain, neck, the whole spine, heart, whether it's, there are four chambers or not, stomach bubble, whether it's present or not, because it's very important to rule out the various um, diseases like esophageal atresia or any other abnormality. Kidneys, urinary bladder, umbilical cord, and all four limbs, including the hands and feet. Here you can see this is the fetal spine. This white structure, the dot, 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 dots you can see around the posterior aspect. This is the fetal spine. This is a case of spina bipeda. Here you can see these are the vertebral bodies. This line, and these are the posterior elements. Down in the lumbosacral region, the posterior elements are absent, and you can see a small cystic area. This is a case of a spinal bifida with a small myelomeningocele posteriorly. This is another case of the spinal bifida with a myelomeningocele which is projecting into the amniotic cavity with a small membrane over it. Image of a fetal brain. Here you can see this is the entire cranium. These two large structures, black areas, I, I told you before as well, the black thing on ultrasound is usually a fluid. So this is the fluid which is accumulated in the both lateral ventricles. And this is the case of a fetal hydrocare, a large lateral ventricles, dilated lateral ventricles with a CSF within it. Here you can see this is fetal MRI. You can see the entire fetus. This is the face of the fetus, which is disproportionately small as compared with the head. The head is extensively enlarged. And here you can see it is filled with the fluid in it. This is also a case of enlarged lateral ventricles due to hydrocaf. This is the spine. Here you can see the spine of the fetus. These are the lungs, stomach, and the bowel loop. These are the legs. This fetus is in breech position. And anteriorly, this gray area is the placenta, which is anteriorly located. And this surrounding gray rim is the myometrium. This entire rim is the myometrium. Now we talk about the placental attachment. This is the last thing I'm going to tell you. This information may help in the management of the delivery because the low length placenta, we cannot deliver the fetus normally. We have to uh, go for a C-section. Placenta can be seen attached to any segment of the uterine cavity. Placenta is seen as the hyperechoic thickening of the uterine cavity. Here you can see this is an ultrasound image showing a posterior placenta. This is an ultrasound image showing an anterior placenta. The placenta which is seen just below the abdominal wall is the interior. And it is away from the abdominal wall as this is the transducer. This is the anterior wall and you can see it's posteriorly. So this is the posterior placenta. Here you can see this is the fetus head in the cephalic position. This is the cervix and the placenta is all over the cervix. This is the placenta previa, grade 4 placenta previa. It is covering the entire cervix. Here you can see this is another case. You, you can better um, appreciate an MRI. This is the cervix. This is the entire enlarged uterus. Here is the placenta, this white area, and it is covering the entire cervix. This is posterior and it's covering the os. Thank you. Anyone has any kind of questions, please raise. Please tell me you can ask.